Hello and welcome to this new electronics webinar with micro Microchip Technology. In this session, we'll have Alok Barua, Microchip Technology EMEA Business Development Manager, talking you through how Microchip's PIC and AVI rapid development environment can enable a faster time to market. Before I hand over to Alok, I'll let you know that if you have any questions, to uh, put them into the box on the right-hand side and we will answer them at the end of the session. Now over to Alok. Good afternoon. My name is Alok Barua, and I am based at our location in Trondheim, Norway, representing Microchip's PIC and AVR business unit. Today, I will be presenting on the PIC and AVR rapid development environment which enables faster time to market and revenue for our clients. Firstly, I appreciate that there will be audience members who may have never used PIC or AVR, nor even microchip. To that end, I think it would be useful to convey with a summary of what we at microchip perceive as the primary needs of our clients. This understanding of a client's needs has shaped microchip technology into a prominent and reliable supplier over the 30 years of its existence and has been instrumental in developing a sizable and loyal customer base, one which we continue to grow year on year. Following on from this, I'll explore Microchip's client support framework, which will detail the four pillars of Microchip's value propositions. As well as providing world-class products and solutions, it's important for our clients to feel confident and secure in our abilities to support them as a robust and long-term supplier. Next, I'll delve into our PIC and AVR pedigree. These two microcontroller families are very well known and loved by engineers and are used extensively across many, many applications and markets globally and both enjoy a dominant position in terms of their popularity and unit shipped. In this section, I'll also cover the portfolio strengths of PIC and AVR, which will serve to illustrate the many reasons why they're used in designs time and time and again. The next section is the main theme of this webinar, and that is microchips and rapid development environment. To most engineers and companies, this single area factors highly in the decision-making process when it comes to choosing a microcontroller for their next development. I'll finish the presentation by delving into the next steps that our audience can take with a series of short videos. Primary needs of our clients. We see two clear groups that microchip gears itself to servicing. The first is management. Under the management perspective, we have identified three areas that figure highly. These are profitable revenue growth, cost reduction, and lastly, risk mitigation. It's clear that without revenue, a company would cease to trade, but more importantly, it needs to be profitable revenue, otherwise salaries can't be paid, nor is it possible to make investments for future expansion and growth. Next one is cost, not price reduction, since costs can quickly eat into a company profits. Last is risk mitigation, as the more a company reduces risk, the easier it is to sail through possible headwinds. The second group is the R&D manufacturing perspective. A company's growth and survival against competition relies on continual innovation. So the R&D team is always seeking, to, seeking ways to speed up development to meet project deadlines and market launches, and this is through rapid software and hardware development tools, rapid prototyping, as well as with innovative features and solutions offered by a supplier. Once manufacturing takes over from R&D, their main concern is to ensure product can be sourced quickly to meet schedules. One other aspect of the supply chain that manufacturing and even R&D are acutely conscious of is product longevity. On average, it costs approximately $100,000 to redesign a product should a main component or components be declared end of life by the supplier. Having confidence in a supplier that has active non evil practices in play provides great reassurance when it comes to a client's go-to market strategy. 
Client Support Framework. Microchip's Client Support Framework can be broken down into the four pillars of Microchip's value proposition. Our complete supply chain solution enables us to ensure a smooth running and robust supply chain. Microchip has complete ownership of the front end and back end operations with the capability to increase its bandwidth by utilizing the resources of our external subcon partners as and when required. Coupled with a wide supply network allows for enormous flexibility to support our clients' requirements as well as instilling long-term confidence. Embedded intelligence integration is our reference to the extensive and exciting product portfolio packages we have available. It enables the freedom to innovate by our clients and motivates them to keep redesigning with our offerings. Mitigating development risk is the third pillar of our value proposition, and that is achieved with our rapid development tool environment. This will be covered in more detail in this session. Finally, the fourth pillar is our financial stability. This is a tremendous attribute as it provides a high degree of confidence in our clients to continue designing and innovating with our products. The PIC and AVR device pedigree. PIC and AVR are two globally recognized architectures in the semiconductor industry. Microchip also happens to be a leading supplier of the other most popular architecture used by industry, but this presentation doesn't have scope to cover that. As you may know, the AVR brand came to Microchip in April 2016 after it acquired Atmel. The AVR brand has always been highly sought after by Microchip and therefore highly prized at all levels and all departments within the company. Both brands belong to one business unit and the strategy to continuously develop and introduce new devices to the market without detriment to the other has significant momentum within the BU and high level management. This year we will introduce four new AVRs and four new picks to the market offering huge scope for continued innovation. We recognize that both brands have their individual loyal followings and so we will continue to offer and maintain the ecosystems that support the respective brands. Although PIC and AVR have a shared history in terms of evolution, they both have their own loyal client base and very rarely do they overlap. Going forward, many of the innovative features that have been introduced across the two brands, such as core independent peripherals, are and will be shared between both platforms going forward, thereby giving existing and future clients the continued flexibility and freedom to innovate. Of course, there is nothing to prevent a loyal client familiar with one architecture to use the other, and we have seen many examples of this over the years. There are many portfolio strengths of PIC and AVR, but I'll do a quick review of the top four. Firstly, the autonomous hardware peripherals allow not only for independent operation from the core, but also for deterministic behavior during operation because of the non-reliance on software for a given function. The touch sensing peripherals on both PIC and AVR are world leading, and the intelligent analog blocks are powerful building blocks for power, lighting, motor control, sensor acquisition applications to name a few. Low power consumption in dynamic static sleep and deep sleep are second to none on PIC and AVR and both brands are widely recognized for this attribute through the Pico Power and XLP proprietary technologies. Due to the design methodology utilized, both offer incredible robustness in terms of wide voltage supply. This also enables non-volatile memory storage made possible with true onboard E-squared PROM and not through flash emulation, giving very high endurance. Robust field operation in hostile industrial environments is made possible with the best-in-class EMI EMC performance. Lastly, the long history and large customer base established over 30 years has led to an extensive design community with a wide knowledge base. This nurtures and instills confidence with new and existing users. With our PIC and AVR MCUs, we focus on helping our clients on solving their engineering problems. By defocusing on CPU MIPS and focusing on functions, we'd like to think that we've shifted the embedded design paradigm a bit. Rather than throwing CPU MIPS at the problem, 
we look to the basic set of tasks or functions common to most embedded systems. By taking a closer look at the tasks our MCUs were asked to perform, we've been able to increase product capability without increasing product cost. Over the past few years, we've architected our PIC and AVR MCU portfolio with both analog and digital peripherals that are highly adaptive and can be used while the CPU is in sleep. When we introduced the configurable logic cell on the PIC and the event system on the AVR, we then had the glue that enabled autonomous function enablement. PIC and AVR Rapid Development Environment In a relatively recent industry survey carried out by Aspen Core, it was established that tools and ecosystem make up for four out of the top eight reasons in influencing the choice of a microcontroller. Number one is the software development tools, followed by ready-made software packages, then hardware tools backed up with debug capability. As already mentioned, these elements are for a given client key to providing a stress-free and smooth progression of a product's inception to realization, improve the ability to meet schedules, keep project expenses from inflating, and last but not least, reduce exposure to client risk. Here, I will review the IDEs that Microchip provide to support development with PIC and AVR. The first option, MPLAB Express Cloud-based IDE, is an online development environment that contains the most popular features of our award-winning MPLAB X IDE. The simplified and distilled application is a faithful reproduction of our desktop-based program that allows users to easily transition between the two environments. MPLAB Express is a perfect starting point for new users of PIC and AVR microcontrollers with no downloads, no machine configuration, and no waiting needed to get started on your system development. MPLAB Express incorporates the latest version of MPLAB Code Configurator, which enables users to automatically generate initialization and application C code for PIC and AVR using a graphical interface and pin map. With massive amounts of storage available to users, you can store your current projects in the cloud. The community feature allows you to share your ideas with others or gain inspiration from the shared code repository. Best of all, MPLAB Express IDE is free and can be used and accessed from any internet connected PC or Mac anywhere in the world. The second option is our award-winning full-blown desktop IDE MPLAB X, also free. It is based on NetBeans and can run on Windows, Mac OS, Linux, and Solaris based machines. It is an expandable, highly configurable development environment that incorporates powerful tools such as the Data Visualizer and IO View to help you discover, configure, develop, debug, and qualify embedded designs for most of Microchip's microcontrollers. The third option, Atmos Studio 7, again also free, as the name suggests, came from Microchip's acquisition of Atmel. Studio 7 is based on Visual Studio and is an IDE for developing and de debugging the full suite of AVR microcontrollers. It gives you a seamless and easy to use environment to write, build, and debug your applications written in C or C++, as well as assembly code. It also connects seamlessly to the debuggers, programmers, and development kits that support AVR. Additionally, Studio includes Atmel Gallery, an online app store that allows you to extend your development environment with plugins developed by Microchip as well as third-party tool and embedded software vendors. Studio 7 can also seamlessly import your Arduino sketches as C++ projects, providing a simple transition path from makerspace to marketplace. Arguably, the software development and debugging portion of a project schedule consumes the most time compared with, say, the hardware development aspect. So, to that end, having the capability to speed this process up or somehow shrink the timelines involved would be a great bonus and yield enormous dividends for management, R&D, and manufacturing. In this regard, Microchip provides two utilities to speed up software development. The first one is MCC or Microchip Code Configurator. It is a free graphical programming environment that generates seamless, easy to understand C code to be inserted into your project. Using an intuitive interface, it enables and configures a rich set of peripherals and functions specific to your application. MCC supports both PIC and AVR and is incorporated into both the downloadable MPLAB X IDE and the cloud-based MPLAB Express IDE. 
The second one, Start, was created at Atmel and is an innovative online tool for intuitive graphical configuration of embedded software projects. It lets you select and configure software components, drivers and middleware, as well as complete example projects, specifically tailored into the needs of your application. With graphical pin marks and cloud configuration, you can easily match your software and drivers with your own hardware layout. Start is an online tool with no installation required. When you are done with your configuration, you can download it for use together with either Atmos Studio 7 IDE or the IAR IDE. If you later need to change the configuration, you can load it in Atmos Start, reconfigure, and continue where you left off. Both Start and MCC are free. In combination with the software configurators, Microchip also provide a range of easy-to-use plug-and-play development tools or boards known as Curiosity Nanos for both PIC and AVR, and I will delve into these in a few slides from now. For AVR specifically, Microchip continues to support the platform known as Explained, which had been developed at Atmel. To aid rapid development from concept to market, here is a representation of the typical development flow that is possible with a combination of the Curiosity Nano boards, Click Expansion boards, and the Code Configurators. With these three building blocks, we really do expect concept to prototype in minutes. With full program and debug capabilities, these are just a selection of the Curiosity Nano development boards that offer complete support for your next design. Every new PIC or AVR device we introduce to the market will be supported by the Curiosity Nano platform. This is a very low cost, powerful standalone development platform. It also comes with IDC pins to allow easy connection to baseboards for quick prototyping without having to go through the soldering process. With the award-winning MPLAB X integrated development platform or the online version MPLAB Express and MPLAB Code Configurator, MCC, these boards provide access to a variety of intelligent analog and core independent peripherals specific to the devices mounted. As already mentioned, MCC is a free graphical program tool that allows for easy configuration of the rich set of peripherals and functions specific for your application. The Curiosity Nano boards are also supported by Atmos Studio 7 and Start. The Microchip Curiosity Nano Base for Clickboards Evaluation Kit is a hardware extension platform to ease the connection between Curiosity Nano development boards and the extension boards like the Microbus Click modules through the Microbus sockets and explained Pro extension boards through the header. Here, we're showing a typical configuration of Curiosity Nano, Curiosity Nano Base, and Clicks. The Curiosity Nano board, which incidentally comes with pin headers in the kit as already mentioned, is connected to the Nano Base board, along with the Micro E Click boards connected to all three sockets. This approach really allows for effortless prototyping, and it's never been easier. MicroE are a prominent microchip partner with a very large offering of click boards. These boards offer the developer to support an extensive array of functions. More than 100 of these have ready-made drivers included with MCC and Start to import into your application, and this adds to your ability to prototype rapidly. To support the imminent launch of the new AVR family known as the AVR DA, we have produced a stressful demo that uses the AVR DA Curiosity Nano in combination with the Curiosity Nano baseboard plus three clicks, namely a force click sensor board to measure the force being applied to the stress ball via the onboard ADC of the AVR. This measurement is displayed on the RGB LED matrix. The strength percentage can also be sent over the BLE click to an Android smartphone and displayed on an Android app. Another approach is to connect the Nano board to a PC where the data visualizer utility running on Studio can display the strength percentage. Another element of our rapid development environment is reflected in this market specific platform for IoT Edge nodes. This AVR IoT Edge Node development board allows for rapid and easy development of securely connected sensors to the cloud. What are the features, advantages and benefits of this kit? Well, number one, we use a Wi-Fi connection, but there is no need to become a networking guru. It's all taken care of by the certified microchip Wi-Fi module. Number two, 
There are no security compromises as the ECC608A secure element is an extremely robust self-contained encryption and crypto authentication device. There is no need to become an expert on security. Both the Wi-Fi module and ECC608A are supported by software libraries on START or MPLAB X to enable seamless interaction with the AVR MCU. The modular approach reduces complexity as well as enabling scalability. It also allows for effortless migration to the cloud for embedded sensors or actuators and mechatronics applications. This board is also available with a PIC MCU and uses the exact same software. Other than the onboard light and temperature sensors already mounted on the board, it is possible to expand sensor types through the micro E click sensor board range to others such as air humidity or pressure. These can be connected through the click connector footprint. So how do we see this development board help clients gain user experience in the growing field of IoT? Firstly, here is an illustration of how a typical industrial IoT system structure would look like. We have the network array of sensors known as edge nodes. And here we are showing the uh, Wi-Fi board and also the BLE board. The next layer would be the gateway. This would then interface to an optional edge computer. The last outer layer is the cloud. Our IoT boards can easily connect to a gateway through the Wi-Fi module. We also provide BLE versions as mentioned. Both enable secure cloud connectivity to three of the major service providers in the market very quickly. In the second half of this year, there will be LoRa and NB-IoT development platforms available too. For an industrial IoT system, we envisage that there will be a requirement for some form of local edge computer as shown, and Microchip can provide a high-end, low-power SAM A5 Cortex microprocessor wireless module with both Wi-Fi and BLE to enable this. So I've mentioned that we can enable secure connectivity to cloud portals available from three of the major service providers on the market. The first partner we started working with was Google back in 2018. This will be followed with Amazon AWS connectivity this month, and it will use the exact same hardware as the Google versions. In autumn, we expect to have the Microsoft Azure versions available. Now, I'd like to emphasize that we will have different out-of-the-box kits available for each of these cloud vendors, but the option is available for the user to change the firmware as required to interface to a different cloud of their choice. This offering demonstrates the incredible flexibility of our platforms to migrate from one cloud vendor to another just by changing the firmware, and so are completely cloud agnostic. What that means also is that clients can adapt them to connect to their proprietary cloud platforms if available in the same secure fashion. Next steps and getting started. What I'd like to do now is share four short training videos with you, which outlines the rapid code development and effortless prototyping environment. And these will be with the MPLAB Express environment, MPLAB XIDE, Microchip Code Configurator, and Rapid Prototyping with Curiosity Nano. Are you looking for a fast, intuitive way to get started with the latest products from Microchip Technology? Then you may want to consider using MPLAB Express. MPLAB Express is a cloud-based, streamlined version of Microchip's award-winning MPLAB X integrated development environment. Some of the benefits of using Express include application development directly in the browser of your choice, with no software downloads, installation, or configuration required. This makes MPLAB Express the perfect tool for users on the go who need immediate remote access to embedded development tools. MPLAB Express always uses the latest version of Microchip's free MPLAB XC compiler with pro optimizations available via monthly subscription. Novice to expert developers can take advantage of the MPLAB Code Configurator graphical programming option for fast, intuitive configuration and code generation for the latest peripherals and device features. And when you're ready for more advanced development features, 
MPLAB Express provides a seamless migration into the full version of MPLAB X IDE. Makers who want to share code with the MPLAB Express community, academics looking for a flexible and portable lab tool, or the industry veteran just looking to test drive the latest technologies from Microchip can get started now by visiting mplabexpress.microchip.com. Hey everyone, Mark McComb here from Microchip Minutes, and in this episode we're going to step through setting up a basic project in MPLAB XIDE. You're going to follow these exact same steps for any application we build in this series. At the end of this video, I'll also be providing links to download step-by-step -step instructions and other resources, so let's get started. Okay, so in MPLAB XIDE, navigate to the top left corner of the screen and just click New Project. In the window that pops open, we're going to select Microchip Embedded under Categories and under Project, Standalone Project, and click Next. Under Devices, we're just going to type into the Device window the PIC 16F1619. Since this is the microcontroller we're going to use on the development board today, and we're going to click Next. Under Supported Debug Headers, we can just click Next, leave everything at default. Here is where we're going to actually select the tool we're using. So the programmer debugger that we're going to use to program our code onto the microcontroller. In this case, we're using the PicDem Curiosity board, which comes with an integrated programmer debugger. So we're just going to go ahead and select that Curiosity and click Next. Here is where you select the compiler tool chain. Uh, we are going to be generating C code using the MPLAB code configurator, so we want to make sure that we select MPLAB XC8 compiler. If you have more than one on your computer, uh, more than one version of the compiler installed on your computer, my recommendation would just be to select the most recent version and then click Next. Here is where we're actually going to name our project and store it in a folder somewhere. So um, I've gone ahead and created a folder called Microchip Minutes under my C drive. In that folder uh, is where my project is going to reside and I'm just going to name the project Basic. I'm going to make sure that the check mark next to set as main project is selected and I'm going to click finish. Okay, so that's it. We're now ready to start building up application code. I encourage you to check out the other videos in this series for specific applications. To download a complete step-by-step -step instruction guide for what we covered in this video or to find out more about our 8-bit products and how to order or sample, please visit the links on your screen. I'm Mark McComb and I thank you for watching. Hey everybody, Mark McComb here taking a closer look at how to install the MPLAB Co-Configurator Graphical Programming Tool version 3.0. I'm starting with a fresh install of the MPLAB X IDE and MPLAB X C8 C compiler. Co-Configurator will work as a plug-in to MPLAB X IDE and it is going to generate MPLAB X C8 C code. To install the Co-Configurator, select Plugins from the Tools menu at the top of the MPLAB X IDE. In the Plugins window, select Available Plugins tab and scroll down being careful to select the MPLAB Co-Configurator version 3. Highlighting the plugin will provide plugin details on the right of the window. Check the Install box next to the plugin and then click Install to continue. Click Next in the Plugin Installer. Read through the license agreement and check to accept and then click Install to continue with installation. Installation will take a few moments. Upon successful installation, click Finish to close the Plugin Installer window and close the Plugins window. A button to launch the MPLAB Code Configurator should now be available at the top of the IDE. Alternately, the Code Configurator can be launched under the Tools Embedded menu. For more information on the MPLAB X Code Configurator, including the User's Guide or to download example projects, please visit the MPLAB Code Configurator homepage at www.microchip.com forward slash MCC. I'm Mark McComb. Thanks for watching.
In terms of for more in-depth training, the self-paced training modules are also available on YouTube. It covers a wide range of topics, one of which is focusing on the core independence. For more in-depth training, the self-paced training modules are also available on YouTube. It covers a wide range of topics, one of which is focusing on the core independent peripherals and their setup. I would like to now conclude today's presentation on Microchip's rapid development environment for PIC and AVR. We firmly believe we can help you to reach your end market, not to mention revenue, much faster with this approach. And I look forward to hearing from you very soon on your new projects. Thank you. Thank you, Alok. That was very interesting. Um, if anybody has any questions, please submit them to the question tab on the right, and we'll do our best to answer them. Uh, we already have one, um, so. Oh, look, how, dif how difficult would it be to use a clickboard that is not su currently supported in the microchip code configurator software? Um, can you hear me, Elliot? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's actually very straightforward. Um, although uh, we support um, 100 of the uh, um, 600 clicks that, uh, that microE make available, uh, the vast majority of micro e clicks can be interfaced uh, with using the following uh, um, serial standards such as I squared Z, SPI, uh, UART, and basic analog signaling. Um, so most of those uh, um, communications uh, protocols have already got drivers available on MCC. So it's just a case of uh, looking at the data sheet uh, for the uh, specific click that is not directly being supported by MCC and to use uh, the uh, building block uh, code that we already make available for I squared CSPI UART, and then basically, in effect, stitching them together uh, and then, then uh, uploading it to your application. So it's, uh, it's, it's pretty straightforward to do that. Thank you. Um, and unless there are any more questions, um, thank you very much for tuning in, and thank you to Alok for answering those questions. Pleasure. And uh, thank you very much for tuning in.